So just quick things. Voicing, it's to express something with words, to vocalize. Uh, so usually in an audio feature, we'll have voiceovers, or the, um, the journalist is, or the broadcaster is inputting their voice into it to either introduce a different person into the piece, or a different subject, or a different um, natural sound, for instance. Um, you can get your voice trained professionally. Uh, a lot of journalists will go through this, especially you know, for the radio. Um, Something to always look for, look into if you would like. Um, but there's a lot of videos online as well for ways to train your voice at home that are really interesting, and I would definitely check out, especially um, through NPR. The a lot of the journalists there have made like short little five minute videos of just quick things to do. Uh, so I just kind of compiled a lot of their advice and put it into this um, this PowerPoint. Just things that we could work on in the booth while we're here. So just a couple things which I'm sure a lot of you have either listen to already are aware of but plosives and other distortions these are just kind of consequences that can usually come when you're too close to the mic so we're going to go over the proper um, technique like microphone technique how to set up the microphone in the booth but those p pops is when there's like an air blast from the mouth and it's usually with like p's b's um, and it's just when your lips like move or like do that little popping noise and you can pick it up in the mic. But other sounds like S's, B, yeah, T, H, F, they can also cause distortion in other ways. So there's certain techniques in audition, for instance, like a de -esser. Um, It's basically like a filter uh, that you can put onto the audio and then you can kind of help pinpoint where that S sound is. But there's other ways that we can avoid this and before even going to post-production. So, and that's usually by practicing, as Rick was saying, our articulation and our airflow. So the big thing for us is slowing down, because when you do slow down and you say each word as it is, you can kind of pick up what words you emphasize more. And if you do emphasize words that have those P's and B's, how to go about fixing that before going into the booth. And then also using the microphone windscreen, um, and then these editing techniques. Like I said, there's the de -esser. there's also noise reduction, there's EQ. You want to sit uh, with the mic off axis. The microphone is off from the center right in front of your mouth, and it's going to be slightly above your mouth. So we can show you guys that in the booth. Um, but as you can see in the picture here, you have the mic pointing down. That way, when there's a blast of air, it's not going directly into the mic, but it's going a little bit underneath it. And that usually helps avoid a lot of those um, popping P sounds. And then breath control too is a good way to avoid um, those other distortions. So using less air when you're articulating these words and exhaling through your nose. And the best thing about either exhaling through your nose as well is you can actually um, be able to go like from a sentence to a sentence and not really have to hear that big like noise that you do as well. Um, usually if you could practice exhaling through your nose, then you can continue on a longer sentence. And that just means less time in post, having like a million clips you have to put together. You can kind of teach yourself how to do less of them um, and spend less time in audition. Also, listen back to yourself. As annoying as you think your voice may be <laughs> and as stressful as it is to listen to your voice, everyone has a great voice. So always listen back, always listen to where you can improve um, because just the more you practice, the better you're going to get at anything. And it's the same with audio. And always practice your script a ton of times before going in because sometimes you may realize this doesn't sound like me at all. Um, and then you have to rewrite, a, you know, not a lot of your script, but there's elements you feel like this isn't really me. I could redo this. Um, so this is just some ideas for before going into the booth. Uh, just like I said, read through the script a lot of times, get familiar with it, know it, the ins and outs of it. Um, any words that you feel like you stumble on, repeat them over and over, or also ask someone how to pronounce it. So this is really good, you know, if there's like a name or a certain company or something, you, you feel like you know how it's pronounced, but you're not 100% sure, always ask. Or you can go online as well. There's a, a website uh, that basically you could type in any word and it tells you how to pronounce it. Um, and they have a lot of companies and you know, foreign countries, things like that as well. Do some facial stretches. A couple things I forgot as well on here, but like drink some something warm too to kind of get any phlegm. If you're sick, kind of get all that phlegm and stuff out of your voice as well. 
Um, but yeah, facial stretches. It's just if you're familiar with your script, you kind of know the, the main points that you want people to take away from your piece. And usually when you have those, those are the parts that you'll emphasize naturally the most. Um, but like I said, again, comes with just being familiar with your script going in. And then punching it, focus on your tone, the rhythm, the volume, adding any pauses. And of course you can add pauses in post, but if there's a specific way that you wanna do it through your voice in the booth, make sure you know where to do that. And I personally love to put breath marks in my script and I can show you guys what that looks like. Uh, but basically, and we'll do it with the um, exercise as well, but when you read your script, wherever you take a breath, just put a slash in your script and read it again, see if those slashes change. So when you read it three or four times, see where you tend to take the breaths. That way when you go into the booth, sometimes you get a bit nervous, you don't know like when to breathe. And so having something on there saying like, breathe now sometimes helps people, at least it, it helps with me. Um, so where it sounds natural. So while you're recording, like we said earlier, tell the story, don't read it. And especially it's important for an audio commentary because it's your story. I mean, it's, you want to emphasize it even more. You know, you really want to deliver it and make people feel the way that you felt going through this situation. Um, open your mouth wide like a singer. So that kind of goes back to the idea of the stretches um, to do beforehand. But it helps to articulate your voice. And it, it kind of helps you feel more confident too. Um, when you just have your mouth wide open and you're just saying every single word, um, everything just comes out a bit more naturally. And don't throw away words. So going back to what Rick was saying earlier, um, make sure that you articulate every single word. And that comes with taking breaths as well. So what I've found is a lot of students, they'll try to get like three sentences out in one track. I don't know if it's because they're lazy or they're kind of rushing but towards the end they kind of run out of breath and then it just kind of like stumbles away. And then you can't hear like the end of their sentence and then it, and then it just cut, cuts them being like, and now we're back to this. And I'm like, what? I didn't hear anything you just said. And, and you have to like highlight that part and like Im increase that sound and like fix this where really if you just break it up to how, um, how you naturally speak, it's a lot easier and takes less time in production. Mm -hmm.